Tom Brady retires. If there's one word that can best sum up Tom Brady's career, it would be champion. What is the physical price for becoming the greatest quarterback of all time? On February 1st, 2022, Tom Brady officially announced his retirement from the NFL. So today, I'm gonna to speak about the injuries that he has suffered during his monumental career and discuss the physical price that has been paid en route to Tom Brady becoming the greatest quarterback of all time. Brady has reached a pinnacle of performance that only few have achieved, and it is unlikely that this has occurred without some toll. So let's talk about what the price for his success has been, and I will let you tell me whether the return on investment is worth the ultimate price obtained. First, let's talk about the achievements. Over the course of a 22 year career, Brady led the NFL in total yards passing with 84,520. He also led with total touchdowns at 624. He is the only player in the NFL to win more than five Super Bowls with a total of seven victories, and he was the MVP of that game five times. He has also won the NFL's MVP award three times. He has been selected to the Pro Bowl 15 times. His lifetime regular season record is 243 wins, 73 losses, while his playoff record is 35 wins, 12 losses. His teams have reached the playoff 19 times and they have won 18 division titles. His conference championship record is 10 wins, 4 losses, and in the Super Bowl, his record is 7 and 3. He is the only quarterback to lead a team to success in Super Bowl wins, and Brady has won nearly 13% of all Super Bowls ever played. And although the performance of many athletes deteriorates with age, Brady appeared like a fine wine to get better. After the age of 37, Brady won four Super Bowls and had a playoff record of 17 and four. His overall record in the years after the age of 37 was 95 and 30, with a completion percentage of 65.2%. He amassed a total of 35,571 yards and 265 touchdowns during his last eight seasons. And when compared to others in the 2000 draft class, Brady had more success in his later years than any of his peers over their entire careers. In his final season of play, Brady led the NFL in yards passing with 5,316, completions with 485, attempts with 719, and touchdowns with 43, despite the fact that the Buccaneers were defeated in the divisional round of the playoffs by the LA Rams. This is a lot for any franchise to achieve, let alone one man. Certainly, this success does not come without sacrifice. In fact, Brady was known for his work ethic, intense exercise regimen, and his strict diet. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said about him that, an incredible competitor and leader, his stellar career is remarkable for its longevity, but also for the sustained excellence he displayed year after year. Nothing short of extraordinary, for real. Retiring at the age of 44, after 22 seasons in the NFL, where the average career length in the NFL is 3.3 years, and the average career length for quarterbacks is only marginally longer at 4.4 years, just from the viewpoint of longevity alone, Brady's career is remarkable. Apart from the first four games in 2016 while suspended and the 2008 season after he suffered a season-ending injury in the first game of the season, Brady has been under center for every game since starting his first game on September 30th, 2001. His durability is otherworldly, with a career that has been five times longer than the average for his peers. Upon announcing his retirement, Brady thanked his franchise and their leadership, his teammates, his coaches, his trainer and agent, and his family. He stated that his teammates, coaches, fellow competitors, and fans deserved 100% of him and felt that at this time, it was best that he leave the field of play to those more dedicated and committed. While only Brady and those closest to him will ever know the reason for his decision, his statements suggest that his dedication and commitment were not what they had previously been and that he felt that he should make way for those who were. His statement did not say anything about his health or injuries. Clearly, there is an emotional toll, one which Brady no longer felt inclined to pay. 
But what was the physical price for this excellence and for the extended output of his success? Obviously, with a career that extends over two decades, it is unlikely that Brady suffered a multitude of serious injuries. However, as I have already mentioned, he has suffered season-ending injury in the past, and he has had surgery on more than one occasion. The Draft Sharks injury predictor rates his durability at five out of five, with five being the most durable. They rated that his chance of missing two or more quarters of play in 2021 was only 5% and that his chance of injury per game was only 0.3%. In fact, when reviewing his injury history, Brady has had only seven injuries of note during his 22 year career for an average rate of only one injury every three years. The first injury that Brady suffered was one of his worst. In the first game of the regular season in 2008, Brady injured his left knee. In only the first quarter of the game, he suffered combined injuries to his ACL and his MCL. The major ligament stabilizers of the knee include the cruciate ligaments that cross inside the knee, the ACL and the PCL, the collateral ligaments on either side of the knee, the MCL and the LCL, and a number of smaller accessory ligaments on either the front anterior or the back posterior aspect of the knee. The ACL resists posterior translation of the femur off the back of the tibia. This means that it stops the thigh bone from sliding off the back of the shin bone. It is damaged with hyperextension or rotation of the knee. The MCL resists valgus opening of the knee. This means that it stops the knee from opening sideways towards the midline. So it is damaged when the knee collapses inward. These ligaments, when damaged, will create a characteristic pattern of looseness or laxity in the knee during direction change, which kind of makes it difficult to move around a lot. Talking about being confined to the pocket. These injuries would make a quarterback completely one-dimensional, which is okay, I guess, if your offensive line is rock solid and your receivers are ninjas. But if not, you are screwed. Now, it is possible for an athlete to play with these injuries using a custom-fitted ligament brace. However, the brace offers only a degree of protection and it is not 100% effective. At the top level of performance, bracing is not the standard first-line treatment, and it is generally only used for protection after the knee ligaments have been reconstructed. Brady underwent surgery during the season and had his ACL reconstructed. There are several techniques that can be used to repair or reconstruct the ACL, but whether you use a one or two tunnel technique or a transtibial or an all inside approach, there are usually four graft choices that can be used to recreate an anterior cruciate ligament. The semitendinosus hamstring tendon, the patellar tendon, the quadricep tendon, all of which are taken from the patient themselves, or an allograft tendon from a donor. Although the three types of autograft taken from the patients are generally comparable in terms of strength and overall results, there is a tendency toward the use of the patellar tendon graft for ACL reconstruction in NFL and collegiate level football players in North America. At the time that his surgery was performed, it is likely that Brady would have undergone a transtibial ACL reconstruction using a patellar tendon autograft harvested from his own knee at the time of surgery. Given that rehab typically continues now for 12 months or more and his return to competition the following season, it is clear that his rehabilitation was likely around nine months following his surgery. Studies have shown that NFL and NBA athletes don't return to pre-injury status until approximately two years after surgery, which gels well with Brady's performance after his return to play. Although he performed well after his return, it was not until the 2015 season that he was able to garner another Super Bowl win. Brady's second injury was a stress fracture in his foot, which occurred during the 2010 season. To be more accurate, this is when the stress fracture was actually diagnosed. It is reported that he played much of the 2010 season with this injury, but given that he had had symptoms in his foot for some time prior to his diagnosis, it is possible that this injury dated back to 2008. Brady was able to complete the season despite his injury. He underwent surgical treatment for the stress fracture in January 2011. Although surgery is not the typical first-line treatment for this injury, the duration of time that his injury had persisted and Brady's elite level of competition are two factors that would have favored a surgical approach. When indicated, surgery for this injury includes an open debridement of the stress fracture site, an open reduction and internal fixation of the fracture with either screws or plates, and bone grafting of the fracture site to promote healing of the stress fracture. 
Typical healing time after surgery is six to eight weeks with total recovery time ranging from four to six months. The 2014 season was Brady's worst in terms of durability. He suffered two injuries in that season. During the preseason prior to the season opener, Brady suffered a left calf strain, which is an injury to the calf muscle. A muscle strain occurs when the muscle fibers that comprise the muscle have been stretched beyond their functional length. Minor strains occur when the muscle fibers have merely been stretched, but not torn. Major strains occur when the muscle fibers have actually been torn, either partially or fully. The natural history of muscle strains is that they are self-limited, meaning that they recover on their own without surgical intervention in approximately six weeks. Brady's muscle strain was quite minor in nature as he was ready to play for the season opener only a short time after the injury. His second injury that season occurred five weeks after he had returned when he rolled his ankle in practice on October 10th, 2014. Brady suffered an undisclosed low-grade ankle injury at the time. Given the mechanism of injury where he rolled his ankle inversion, it is likely that he suffered a grade one ankle sprain. Like muscle strains, sprains range from the minor in nature, grade one, with tissues that are stretched but not torn, to major, grade three, where tissues are completely torn and stability of the involved joint is fully compromised. However, strains affect muscle tissue, influencing contractility and strength, whereas sprains affect ligaments, thereby influencing joint alignment and stability. Brady's ankle injury was similarly benign as his calf injury was, as he did not miss any games as a result. The natural history of ligament sprains is generally favorable with a return of function within six to eight weeks for minor injuries. However, for more serious injuries, since the rate of ligament metabolism is generally slower than that of muscle or bone, and since ligaments confer joint alignment and stability, more serious injuries are often associated with problems of recurrent instability and more prolonged recovery. In all likelihood, Brady's injury was not entirely resolved on his return to play, but was minor enough that with bracing and concurrent rehabilitation, he was able to perform adequately. Brady's next injury occurred in 2018 in the week leading up to the AFC Championship game. Only three days prior to the game on Wednesday, Brady suffered a laceration to his throwing hand right during practice. And I'm thinking, I really don't know what happened to my thumb, but I know it doesn't feel good. I know it doesn't feel good. The laceration was deep and long enough to require stitches for its closure after the wound was cleaned. However, it was not serious enough to preclude him from playing in the championship game on Sunday. It is hard to know how this injury affected his performance when he was playing in the championship game. Brady has time. Looking. It is conceivable that depending on its location, a laceration, even if sutured, could limit his ability to grasp the ball as forcefully as to what he was accustomed, which might in turn affect his accuracy. What do you think? Do you think that his hand affected his play during the playoffs? Almost two years later in his final season with the Patriots, Brady injured his right elbow again during practice, sometime during the week before the November 24th, 2019 game. The injury was included on the Patriots injury report, but it did not stop Brady from playing in the game against the Cowboys on November 24th. Without further information about the injury, it is hard to speculate on what it might have been. However, Brady's ability to play in the Cowboys game in spite of it speaks to the minor nature of the injury, making it a low-grade injury of some kind. Given that it was the elbow of his throwing arm, I can conceive of two injuries that might have occurred. One injury might have been a repetitive use injury of the elbow from frequent throwing, given that this was later in the season when the injury occurred. This would result in a tendinopathy of the flexor pronator muscles of the forearm, which would cause pain at the inner elbow. This injury would resolve with activity modification and forearm flexibility exercises and could be managed in a way that would allow Brady to continue playing in a modified capacity. That is to say, less throwing. Another injury might have been an elbow contusion, which could have occurred if 
his arm had contacted the teammate's helmet while throwing in scrimmage during practice. This would result in a contusion or bruise that would cause pain in the elbow when the arm was extended while throwing. This injury would also resolve with activity modification and supportive treatment with rehabilitation and pain control. Game time management would be the same for Brady. Brady's final injury occurred during early 2021. Well, it was actually taken care of in 2021, although it had occurred sometime during the final season with the Patriots in 2019. On February 1st, 2021, Brady underwent another knee surgery to repair an MCL injury to his left knee. This time, the MCL had apparently been injured in isolation rather than with the ACL. It had not immediately been unstable since it had been managed non-operatively for more than a year after it had occurred. However, eventually, Brady had come to the conclusion that the persistent instability or discomfort associated with this ligament injury warranted surgery. For a right-handed quarterback, an isolated MCL injury of the left knee would be problematic when rolling to the right with some degree of instability when throwing in that direction. It could also be problematic when throwing from the pocket to the right when his back was to edge rushing defenders where the defenders or even one of his own linemen could roll up on the leg while planted, forcing his knee to the inside. Unlike the ACL injury, an isolated MCL is much more amenable to bracing, which can be used as the first line treatment for athletes who cannot discontinue competition after injury. In fact, only days after winning the 2019 Super Bowl, the NFL Network's Tom Palacero reported that Brady had played most of the 2019 season with some discomfort in the knee. Although the injury was initially reported as a partial MCL injury by the Tampa Bay Times' Rick Stroud, Ian Rappaport later reported that the MCL had been fully torn. So it appears that Brady had been playing with this injury for some time prior to his decision to have it operated on. Buccaneers coach Bruce Arians reported that Brady had undergone a simple cleanup, suggesting that he had only undergone a simple arthroscopy and debridement. However, Brady, who declined to give specifics about his surgery, later stated that his injury and his surgery were pretty serious. Although it is quite possible that he had his MCL repaired in this procedure, given the history of pain and not instability for the season prior to surgery, I suspect that it was intra-articular pathology within the knee rather than the ligament injury itself that prompted the surgery. Those who have suffered an injury to the ACL in the past have an increased incidence of arthritis of the knee in the future, and also an increased incidence of meniscal pathology following ACL injury. Given that Brady's initial ACL injury occurred in 2008, it is quite conceivable that 11 years later, his knee would show some degenerative changes and possibly some meniscal pathology that would cause persistent joint discomfort when vigorously active. Pretty serious damage would not be unusual for a 43-year-old quarterback who had already undergone knee surgery for an ACL tear more than a decade before. Pretty serious damage might be enough to limit the shelf life for elite level competition to only one more season. Which begs the question, was it a lack of motivation and competitive drive that forced Brady to walk away from the game? Or was it really the physical toll that had finally become too steep a price to pay that forced him away? What do you think prompted his decision? So in the end, Brady, arguably the greatest quarterback of all time, amassed a collection of records that supersedes that of several Hall of Famers combined. He demonstrated a durability that extended his career five times the average duration, suffering only one major injury and having undergone only three surgeries. He is the only athlete to have won the Super Bowl seven times and been the Super Bowl MVP five times. He is the only quarterback to have guided his team to back-to-back -to -back Super Bowls. He alone has won almost one in six Super Bowls, and he is the oldest quarterback to have won the Super Bowl. And he is walking away from the game while his performance is peaking at its highest level and with relatively little damage to show for it. Only Brady himself can truly say whether the scales are balanced at the time of checkout. But from my point of view, I would say that the return on investment after being overlooked and drafted 199th overall in 2000 was well, well worth it. Thanks for watching and subscribing. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.